Good morning, everyone. It's December 13, 2009. I'm Dwight Schmuck. This is the Schmuck Look. And I got a couple of things today. Uh, got them off the BBC, as usual, but, you know, Tony Blair over there in the UK, who was Prime Minister or his Prime Minister, was some hot and tot. He uh, used the weapons of mass destruction argument on his people, the, the British, the UK, United Kingdomites to get them into the Iraq invasion that George Bush had to have because, you know, Saddam had all those weapons of mass destruction that he so carefully hid no one has found any to date. But now Mr. Blair, who is facing strong criticism, says he would have gone to the war even if he had known there weren't any weapons of mass destruction. He would have uh, tailored... He, Critics have said Mr. Blair misled Parliament and tailored his arguments to fit the circumstances. And Blair himself added he, even if he had known that there were no weapons of mass destruction, he would have used different arguments to justify the war. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we gotta go. George said so, so I'm gonna tell you something that'll make you upset. Isn't that what politicians do anymore? They don't actually fix a problem. They create them. You know, the thing is... <laughs> Blair uh, has a strong impression of a lack of sincerity, according to one of the critics. The war was sold on... And I'm reading this directly... The war was sold on weapons of mass destruction, and now you feel or hear that it was only a question of deployment of arguments. It sounds a bit like a fig leaf that was held up, and if the fig leaf had not been there, they would have tried to put another fig leaf there. And that's the truth here. You know, they they told all of us about these weapons of mass destruction. They got us all upset, and then there weren't any. But, you know, they would have figured something else out if... We didn't buy that argument. Isn't that a politician anymore? Just a bunch of lies. And speaking of politicians, let me get my second bookmark here. Because Houston, Texas, has elected, in a runoff election, their first openly gay mayor. And I'm bringing this up because of two things. You know, and I really want to stress these... Uh, the the new mayor, Ms. Parker, who's openly lesbian, she says, and I'm quoting, the voters of Houston have opened the door to history. You know, and, and uh, one of the paragraphs reads, anti-gay activists and conservative religious groups endorsed Mr. Locke, the opponent who lost, and sent out leaflets to residents condemning Mrs. Parker's, Ms. Parker's homosexual behavior. You know, what I'm saying here, <laughs> all that money spent because of something that has no bearing on the job. Can she do the job should have been the only question. You know, yeah, you want to know if someone's a thief. You want to know if someone is a murderer. That type of thing, sure. But their sexual habits, unless they're forcing children or animals... It's really no big deal. Shouldn't be. It should just be a question of can this person do the job. And you know what? We've had gay senators, gay congressmen, obviously gay mayors, and a couple of gay governors, as I recall. We've even had a gay president. Oh, yes, we have. Check it out. I believe it was number 14, Mr. Buchanan who wore gowns to several fancy dress parties, and that's about as open as you can get, and he slept with his boyfriend in the White House during his term, and the sun still comes up every morning. Isn't it amazing? The only question is, can they do the job? That should be the only question and the only criteria involved. At any rate, we've had all these gay lawmakers, and we have gay athletes and gay emergency services people, and my question, being the schmuck I am, is if these folks are equal enough to hold these positions, how come they're not equal enough to get married? I'm Dwight Schmuck, 
And folks, that's today's schmuck look.